Hey, friend, Chris here from MyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today, I want to show you seven or so functions in Logic that by default are not assigned to any key commands whatsoever. And yet, I really think if you take the time to assign them to some keys on your Mac's keyboard, it will dramatically speed up your workflow. First, let's go up to Logic Pro in the taskbar at the top. Let's click on it, go to key commands, and let's go over to edit. You can also use key command option K to bring up the key command menu. So out of the gate, we can see every single function in Logic Pro that's available to assign to a key command or has been assigned to a key command right in this all tab. And if we just scroll through, we can see many, many different functions of varying sorts across the application. And we have various categories such as the step sequencer, the step editor, the project audio, audio file editor, so on and so forth. And by pressing option and clicking on the disclosure triangle, we're closing and opening all categories. Right at the top here, we can see that key command R has been assigned to the record function by default. By pressing R on your Mac's keyboard, you begin recording in your projects. Other functions such as record and record repeat are not assigned to any key command whatsoever. What's super cool is if you actually press a key command with this menu open, let's say control H, we are directed to the function of that particular key command if one such assignment exists. So in this case, we've navigated to the hide show selected tracks. So we could press, you know, shift S to see select instrument channel strips. We can press command F to show hide flex pitch in time. This can be really helpful for identifying which function goes with which key command, or maybe there's not a function assigned to any key command, such as shift, control, option, and R. I've just pressed those four keys and we don't see any change in the menu. So perhaps there's no function assigned to this key command. We can also narrow our focus in the key commands menu using the other tabs such as used or key, touch bar or unused. And the unused tab is really where I wanna spend our time today. What's really cool is there's a search field within the key commands menu so we can seek out and search particular functions. And I'd actually like to bring our attention back to record. We have two functions called record repeat and record toggle that I'd like to assign to key commands. Before we do though, let's just examine some of the behaviors of the record button. If you right click or hold control and click or just click and hold, we're treated to a menu that offers us different behaviors and options for the record button when we begin recording in Logic Pro. By default, obviously it's set to record, but we also have record or record toggle or record and record repeat. So let's just keep it on record. And I have this audio track here with the record enable button enabled. And we're just gonna play around with some of the recording behaviors to learn how each of them differ from one another. So out of the gate, if you press R on your Mac's keyboard, or if you press on the record button in the control bar, we begin recording on this track. There's no audio passing through, but we'll just assume there is. Now, if we press R again, nothing happens. If we press the record button again, nothing happens. If we press spacebar or stop, we stop playback. Now all is well and good, but perhaps I wanna start recording again, but from bar one. If we press R to begin recording, we begin recording from wherever the play had stopped. It's not really helpful to be honest. So in this case, we could easily just press return or return to bar one, but perhaps I wanna begin recording from bar three. Okay, we have a take but I want to record from bar three again. Unfortunately, return doesn't help us and we actually have to move the playhead to bar three to begin recording. So it's just kind of an extra step, unnecessary in my opinion, getting rid of all these empty regions. If we click and hold, let's go to record and record toggle. In this case, if we press R or the record button, we're recording. Now, if we press R or the record button again, look at that. We stop recording, but the playhead continues on. This is really helpful because perhaps we need to record again, starting at bar seven. So we get up to bar seven and begin recording again. I missed it slightly, but that's okay. Nonetheless, we can pick up and stop recording as the playhead is playing through the project. Yet if I press R again, we begin recording from wherever the playhead last stopped. And if we click and hold and go down to record or record repeat, if we begin recording by pressing R, and let's press R again. Ah, in this case, Logic determines that we've decided that we don't like the original take, so we wanna replace it. So just 
you know, repeat the recording process, just get rid of that last take. And that's not really ideal either, because if we press R again, we just pick up from the last place the play had stopped. So the point is, I want to be able to record from the last place the recording began. In that case, let's open the key command menu using option K. Let's select record repeat. And let's assign a key command to this function. We'll click on learn by key label. So I'm going to use key command shift, control, option, and R. And now we've assigned this particular key combination to record repeat. It's disappeared from the menu because it's no longer an unused key command. Instead, we would find it under one of the other tabs, such as all or used. And let's also assign record toggle. In that case, I'll use shift, control, option, and P. All right, cool. So now if we begin recording, and let's just make sure that we're set back to record. Begin recording. We're recording a take. We stop playback. And I want to record again, starting at bar one. Shift, Control, Option, and R. And boom, now we're starting from our original recording position. This works anywhere else. So let's begin recording from bar seven. Stop, Shift, Control, Option, R. And there it is. Beautiful. And with our other key command for record toggle, we can begin recording. And then use Shift, Control, Option, and P to stop recording. And Shift, Control, Option, and P to begin recording again using record toggle. These two functions are so helpful. It allows us to begin recording from the same exact place again and again and again without having to manually move the playhead with record repeat. And we can also stop and pick up recording at any moment thanks to the record toggle key command. Next up, I want to dig into some automation in this project. Now, all these loops that you're seeing are from a starter grid that comes with Logic Pro. It's the watch the sound with Mark Ronson starter grid. And if I use key command option L, we're redirected to the live loops area. If I use option B, we see both the live loops area and the tracks area side by side. And option N focuses on just the tracks area. And let's actually just take a listen to some of these loops. And I'm using key command option period and option comma to move from one marker to the next. These are pre-assigned, really helpful. Anyways, I think I want to automate the drums to reduce in level, probably right at about marker two. So if we open the automation view and we zoom in, and I'm going to use my marquee tool, it's my command click tool by holding command. You can see it right up here in the menu. If I make a selection of automation, I've now created four nodes, which is really helpful. Now, if I decide I wanna ramp up this particular section, you can see that as I adjust this node, it's a very fluid motion, but sometimes you want your automation to snap to the grid at exact beats and bars. A lot of folks don't know there's actually snap automation right under the snap menu in the tracks area. And we go down to snap automation and we can activate snap automation on an automatic basis. So it adjusts based on your resolution with the grid or we can base this on bar or beats and you just activate it. And at this point, if we make any sort of adjustment, great. And if I zoom in, it's beautiful. However, maybe you don't want to go to the snap menu every time you want to activate or deactivate snap automation. So let's bring up that key commands menu again. Again, if you go to Logic Pro, go to key commands and edit, you'll find it. And let's find snap automation. There we go. Toggle snap automation. So let's learn by key label. And I'm going to use the key command shift option command A. Beautiful. So now if we use that key command shift command option A, and if we go up to the snap menu, we can see it's been activated. We can make those adjustments. Once again, shift option command A. And now we've disabled snap automation. Fantastic. Let's now head into the mixer. And one thing that I think is really helpful when you're mixing and you're working on your projects is sometimes you need to bypass all the plugins on a channel strip to see if you're making a positive impact with your processing to that track, or perhaps maybe we're taking things a little too far. We're overcooking things with our processing. Now, of course you can hover your mouse over each of the plugins. You see the power button. 
Now, if we slide across, we can power down all the plugins or power them back up. But, you know, it's not an immediate process. You know, you're sliding through multiple plugins to hear how that effect sounds. If we take a listen, actually. You know, you hear that staggered effect of each plugin being turned on one after the other. So in that case, back to the key command menu, let's search for bypass. And we can actually create a key command to bypass all the effect plugins. In that case, I'm going to use shift option one as that key command to bypass the plugins on a channel strip. And now if we give it a try and we take a listen, shift option one bypasses those plugins all at the same time. Shift option one reintroduces them. And take notice that the noise gate remains in its bypass state. It's not re-enabled if we use this key command. Logic Pro is smart enough to notice the fact that that plugin is bypassed, so maybe we don't want it to be toggled back and forth. So let's take a listen and a look. That is awesome, it's such a huge help. Additionally, sometimes you wanna be able to copy and paste plugin chains or even sends from one channel strip to another. For example, we have this empty audio track and perhaps I wanna copy and paste the entire plugin chain on the drums to this audio track. Now to do that, if we click on the setting field, there's actually a function called copy channel strip setting and we can use option command C to copy this channel strip. So option command C, the only problem is, is there's no key command yet to paste the plugins or the sends only. So once again, option K, bring up the key command menu and let's search for paste. And we have paste plugins only and sends only. So let's learn by key label and I'm gonna use shift option two for the plugins and shift option three for the sends. And now we can option command C to copy the entire channel strip but we can paste just the plugins using shift option two, as well as the sends using shift option three. Look at that. And we can also copy send levels as well. The last two sets of unassigned functions have to do with undo steps. So let's go up to edit and let's go down to undo history. Now the undo history by default doesn't include parameter changes from the mixer or plugins but we can include them. So as you can see, if we make any sort of adjustments to the mixer, we adjust send assignments, faders, panning, we can see they're being populated in the undo steps, thanks to the fact that we've enabled mixer and plugin options. And if we go into a plugin, and let me just move this over, we make any sort of adjustments here, you can see they're being populated in the undo history as well. So now if we want to undo these steps, we click undo and then undo and then undo, but we're going through every step, including the mixer, any other plugins that we're adjusting, you know, changing the channel strip settings, et cetera, et cetera. And perhaps you wanna treat mixer undo and redo and plugin undo and redo separate from anything else in Logic Pro. Well, in fact, we can do exactly that. So option K, and let's go to plugins. And as you can see, we have plugin undo and redo that are specific just to plugins. So for this, I'll use control option command and the left bracket. For plugin redo, I'll use control option command and right bracket. And then for the mixer, undo and redo, let's use control option command, comma, and control option command, period. All right. So now if we make adjustments to our mixer, of various sorts, we can use control option command, comma, to undo, control option command period to redo, and specific just to the mixer. The same goes for plugins. So if we make these adjustments within the plugin and then use our key command, control option command, left bracket to undo, or control option command, right bracket, we go back and forth. And you can see that the undo and redo buttons within the plugin are adjusting. And even better, if we make any adjustments in another plugin, as you can see, I made two adjustments to the flange factory in pedal board. We use that key command, control, option, command, left bracket. 
And when I try to undo a third time, I can't because I've only made two adjustments within pedal board. Meaning if we decide to undo or redo something within a plugin, it's only within that plugin that is in focus at the moment. Whereas if we go back to the channel EQ, now we're focused in on just the channel EQ. If I back it all the way up, we can't do any more because we haven't done anything more within this channel EQ. And just like that, we've now assigned seven or so functions in Logic Pro to key commands when previously there were no assignments for those functions. And we've dramatically sped up our workflow when it comes to recording, when it comes to automation, copying and pasting different aspects of a channel strip, and even undo and redo for the mixer and plugins separate from anything else in Logic Pro. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly recommend subscribing to the channel, Wide Logic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, widelogicprorules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, emails, or posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Thanks so much.